So this video about Flower Mania is focused on the stitching, the optimal, best, most awesome, fantabulous way to stitch all of the pieces together. That's why I wanted to make sure that I got most of a quilt done by the time that I launched this because I consider myself a master of stitching up some flower mania now and I'm gonna share that with y'all. So where this video is going to go, I'm going to show you how to stitch the two groups together. Dun, 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 dun. And then I'm gonna show you how to stitch them together to where those points on those diamonds are on fleek, y'all. I was gonna say on point, but then I said on fleek and I know I sounded totally lame. <laughs> but if you're ready to have some fun and learn how to stitch these flowers together, then stick around for some fun. <laughs> Yay! So in this video, I'm going to show you how to stitch the two different groups, group one and group two. I have all of my shapes basted. I have six shape A, I have four shape B, one different one for the center than for the outer ones. I have six shape C, and then six and six of the D and the E. So for group one, you need one of your outer hexagons, you put your center hexagon away until you get all of the groups done together. So you need one center hexagon. You need one shape A, and you need one and one, and then that's it. So I'll put the rest of them away. And as you can see, I have my thimble pad on, I have my thread cutters ring, I have three millimeter needles with the Dove 50 weight or a fill from my Mr. Domestics toolbox ready to go to get you through this. So this is the top of the pedal. So this goes on top of the pedal and I do this hexagon first. Now I'm not going to show you how to whip stitch. I have a video, an English paper piecing video on whip stitching, but this is going to just show you in real time the order that I go in and some tricks along the way. You'll get an inkling for what whip stitching looks like by watching me through the videos, but that's not the intention of this. It's just to show you the, the tips. So I'll get this all the way to the end. Let me speed up until I get to the end. And now I have gotten to the end, so it's the final stitch. And then I go through that again. If you watched my other videos, you'll see the, the ninja action where I just turn it, grab the needle, pull it through. And that locks it in a knot. And I like to leave like a, an inch to an inch and a half tail on all of mine because I use them throughout just to double secure. So this is the first part. And the next, these shapes, they're very similar, so you could get confused, but it's impossible to sew them incorrectly. Like this is the edge that I was talking about that butts up against the hexagon that goes here. So as you can see, it goes correctly here. If you tried to sew this one over here, it just it wouldn't work. There's no way for the geometry to work. So you don't ever have to, to worry about bungling that up. You'll get it fine. And so I just pick one of them and I always start with the hexagon here and I'll butt this up against here and then I start stitching here and I get my first stitch in I'll do a double knot here prefer to, to start with a, a double knot secure on the edge as opposed to a knot on the end it just seems to, to work better for me it's more secure and then I'll stitch this. I'm gonna get it to here. I'll fast forward to here and then I'll show you what I do there. And then I have one more stitch and I am right here. And then I overly secure this and I'm gonna do that ninja action again where I turn it, grab the needle and have it go through. And then I grab this tail right here. There was a tail that I left over or started with and I'll do a double knot here. And I do this for almost all of the intersections, unless for some reason I don't have a long enough tail, just to really secure it in place before I bend it and go to the next one. Otherwise, these might start to open the stitches that I did, but now I can bend this. See how I bent it? Bend it. And I know that everything's set and it's not gonna go anywhere. 
And then I stitch down these two shapes to the end. I'll get this started and then show you a couple stitches and then fast forward. Um, as you can see here, it's my last few stitches, but there's a tail here. So I would just move it out of the way and it helps me secure the end so that I can get there and don't accidentally sew the tail in. If you do sew the tail, it's no big deal. It just um, will be more flush and a better stitch if you can move it out of the way. So I get to the end and then I have just enough for a nice little double knot. I'll stick it in this little hoop. Doop, doop, there. And then this one's done. And now I'll go and I'll do the other side just like this one. I'm not going to show you in the video, um, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's all complete. And ta-da! Look! I have a finished group one that kind of looks like an angel with wings to me and a head. And um, it's very flat, as you can see. It wouldn't have come out this way at the end, but I have a video on sewing shapes together and in that it shows you what I do with them, which is I'll steam press it with an iron on the back and then on the front just to flatten it out. And that's what I did here, but this is group one. And then next, I'm going to go on to group two, which is kind of similar. The main difference, but I'll leave this one out so you can see it. The main difference between this, it doesn't have a B on it. It has the wing, so it has a D and an E. But then it brings in the diamonds. These thin little diamonds here. And this is just so how I can keep it separate. And the reason I didn't put a B here, I have, I alternate it, which you'll see in a, f a future video, but I don't know generally what the layout's gonna be like whenever I'm making a quilt. So I like to keep it open as opposed to making some with six and some without. This way I can just fit them, to the, fit them together like a puzzle in the end. But now I'm going to show you how I sew these together. And this is group two. So I attach the wings, the D and the E first, very similar to, as you can see, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look right if it were over here. And I'll just show you some, some ways that it doesn't fit this way. So if you were to try and sew it on the wrong way, it doesn't fit. This is too long. So it's just something to look for. This side is a little bit shorter, so it fits right here. And that's how you'll know. And then also the longer side of this wide angle is going to be on the bottom. So it's the bottom of the wing as opposed to the shorter side being on the top. So that's how you know when you got it right. Then I'll get started on one of these little wings and show you. But for this part of the video, the main thing to really see is the diamonds. Because I have figured out a way to put the diamonds in there that is pretty simple. It's pretty easy. It makes it almost um, a part of a larger shape. So the points will be really nice and fine as you're making your flower mania. So I got started on here and show you a couple of stitches just so you can see and then I'll fast forward till the end. Okay, and I am to the end and as you can see, there's another tail that I'm moving out of the way as I continue to sew towards the end. And wanted to show you some ninja action of what I do with the tail just to, to get that into the brain because it's um, important for me just to make sure that the whole thing is secure since you're hand sewing it all. So do the ninja action to where I'm turning it, pull the needle through, that locks it in with a knot, and then I leave about an inch and a half of the tail so I can use it for later. As you can see, one of the wings is on, and I'm going to do the second one off camera and then come back and show you how to put on one of the diamonds. So now we have this section of group two done, and we have to attach the shape C's to them. And this is a diamond, the elusive diamond. I'll show you how I attach it and then attach this group to group one and why it, it's the best I feel for flower mania, especially to attach it in this order. And I'll usually start with the end 
where the tail is facing out, whether it's here or here. And this one, it's down there. And I'll line up the corner right there. The corner here to this corner. And then I'll grab my thread. And I will start not right on the end, but like a couple millimeters above the end. And when I attach the group one to the group two, it'll make sense why I do that. So I do my double knot there. And then I just get this and I'll whip stitch this. And it becomes just like any other shape. At this point, whenever you're stitching it, you don't think of it as a skinny diamond. You just think of it as another shape because you're just focusing on the edges. And at no point as you're stitching this way do you ever, ever have to consider making sure that the points are on point. <laughs> it's all about just stitching. And I'm going to fast forward until I get to that part. Then as you can see here, I'm getting towards the end. Gonna move this tail out of the way. And just do a couple more stitches. And then when I get to this corner, it's like a, be a Y seam if you're traditionally sewing. I do my double knot. And then I'll take the tail here from before and I'll double knot this. And that's a lot of double knottage so that I know that all of those stitches I did along this are gonna be secure whenever I fold it. So now, I just fold it. I don't even have to do a full fold here. Just fold it to where that right there, and then I'll start there, just going up the other side of the little skinny diamond. And it's NBD, to be honest, to sew this into there. But that's why, and this was through learning that I learned this, that's why I make sure to attach the D and the E, so the wings, to the A before doing this, so that it is literally painless to integrate the, the skinny diamond. If you weren't to do the D and the E before, and you put the diamond in, and then put the D and the E, I could see that becoming problematic. But one of the joys of sewing is we each find our own way. So once you get into this, if you wanna try it that way, just to give it a whirl, then go for it. It might be the way for you, but in the almost 49 flowers that I did, the first like half of those I experimented and this was the, the best way that I found. And that's why I wanted to have an almost full quilt by the time I launched this was that, so that I could show y'all the best way to, to stitch it. Now I'm almost to the end. I'm letting you see this in real time. Because I know the drama. You want to see, hey, does it, does it gonna really work? And you can see the wide angle. It's right there. I get to right below the wide angle. It's just like here. You don't want to get to the very end. I like to leave a couple millimeters. Just because you might need that. You might need that wiggle room. You might be a little off and that's all good. I did a double knot and I'm just gonna do another one just because there's no tail. And then I'll use my thread cutter. And then see, boom, boom. Look at that, you got yourself a diamond in there. Shine bright like a diamond. And I'm gonna sew the other one in off camera and then iron it. And then I'll show you how to join group one and group two. So yay, group two is done. See, the diamonds are just right in there. And let me grab the group. One, now I'm gonna show you how to put these two together and why I left this here. And I'm just gonna show you something that right here, as you can see the edge, the corner, it goes a little bit over. And this is a little, a little short, this one goes a little bit over, it goes a little bit over. With fabric on the points, it's not necessarily going to get that kind of a fine point as perfectly whenever you're basting as you would need to put these shapes together. That's why I left a little bit open here because we're not even focused on it when we get to the edges now. So I'm gonna sew these two together. And this is something that I do 
with all of them. Anytime I'm joining two of these pieces together is right here and it's counterintuitive, but I learned this because this shape is going to go against the center hexagon, so the A, and you want those to be flush, right? And you want this one to go against that. So at no point are you going to stitch the shape C to this one. So I start this, whenever I join these, I always, I always start them on the bottom, and my first stitch is stitching the shape A to shape A. I don't even put a, a stitch into the shape C at this point. So that's where I start it and I'll put my double knot there. And by doing this, this takes care of any underage or overage whenever you attach that diamond. You're not even concerned with it at this point. And now see it's secure, it's not going anywhere. And then I'll just move this one over here and now I'm concerned with stitching the shape C onto this A and it's gonna get right to that corner. It's gonna work perfectly. And I'll do the first couple of stitches just to show you. See that one, it was the orange into the purple. And that's all I'm focused on now is those. I'll fast forward until I get to the corner so you can see. And now I'm almost there, getting that tail out of the way. A couple more stitches. I'm right there. Do one more. Do the ninja action. Turn it, grab the needle, pull it through, and then find this tail. And I'm double securing it here. So if there's ever not a tail, you should be fine for the most part, but this way I know that those stitches are never gonna come through. I broke the thread there, but see how it's secure? It's not going anywhere. And now, I'm gonna start right there in that corner and start this thread over again. Now knowing that those are secure, I just bring this over and I'll fold this. See, I'm folding that. And now I'm gonna go up the other end, right here. It's just a subtle fold. I'll get some of those stitches in. And then I'll fast forward a little bit till I get towards the end so you can see why I left that space in the top also. Okay, now I'm getting towards the top right here. And you can see the corner on here, whenever you're doing it, you see this corner. It's subtle, but you wanna get right to under that, do the final stitch, and then, this is what I do. I'm not even really concerned about the diamond at this time. I'm concerned about this point, these two points here, where the tails are. Those two, I wanna make sure that those two are lined up right there, and then I'll, I'll adjust the rest of it. And here I'll move the tail out of the way. And then I'll start stitching right above where the tail is. And then I'll just stitch the rest of it. And leaving that gap will, and that we did earlier will allow the point to always be crisp. Because essentially the fabric just lays flat behind all of the stitching. And it's secured by the double knots that you did before. So everything should be good to go for you. Let's get toward the end so we can see what this magic looks like when you open it. This is exciting stuff. We're making flower mania flowers. A few more stitches. You saw it in real time. And then one more, get to the end. And then I have the needle go through. Ninja action. Just because. Let's do one more. Cut it with my thread cutter. And then here's the magic. Ready for the magic? Boom, 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 boom. There you go. 
that diamond is perfect and awesome and amazing and we're good to go so that's all I'm going to show you with these from here you should be able to sew the entire flower mania together and the only next step that I would do with this is I would flip this over press it flat flip it over again press it again and then we are good to go with flower mania so yay! I think that y'all are ready to be some flower maniacs now don't you so I got you to the point where you can stitch the groups together and hopefully after that you can stitch up your own flower on your own so if you have any questions or comments make sure to leave it in the comments here and if you have some fun or learn some tricks or some tips then make sure to give this video the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so keep it positive y'all mr domestic out <laughs>